Hey. G'day guys, I'm not sure if I've um, put the video up yet because I've just finished, or you can't see because of the sun, I've just finished doing the lights, the um, the light controller on the police car, the sirens and that. The other thing I have to fit to it is this, which is the like ticket speeding printer thing. Um, I'm pretty keen to get this going, so even though I haven't, might not have put this video up yet, edited it, I'm going to start working on this one. So the way this thing works is you, the police car would like drive up next to the car that they want to pull over or that they want to get for speeding. They would equal the speed of that car, they'd push a button on this and it would print out a little piece of paper that's got their speed on it. This doesn't work and it didn't come with paper. And the biggest thing is the plug on the back is really weird and the pins are really small. So it's going to be interesting trying to figure out how it works. But yeah, I'll start with pulling it apart. Um, these, it says pull on here. That's just that. And this is push, and that's that. Oh yeah, so that's like, this is like the little ribbon with ink on it. So that as the paper comes over it, a little thing will press on the ribbon to transfer ink to paper. So one thing I did do before is I unscrewed these. And once you unscrew these, this slides out of its case. But it comes to there and then stops. I can see there's screws on the side here to stop it. This has been like smashed with a hammer. A lot of this stuff on Yahoo Auctions where I got this has been hit with like a hammer on the front and like properly smashed. I think it's something with how they're supposed to dispose of old police gear. For some reason this one's been hit on the top and not the front, so I got it and it was pretty cheap. What I'm going to do is bend this case out flat, get rid of the dent. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this just yet. When this is in the car, the, um, the dash only comes to here and this all sticks out. Like it looks kind of funny in the car, I don't like it. So I might actually sink it in all the way back. I'm guessing it sticks out because you have to be able to open this thing to change the paper or something. But we'll see how I go. We'll, um, we'll straighten that up. I might be able to patch this somehow. But for now I'm not going to be too worried. Take these screws out the side and see if it comes all the way out of its, um, out of its sleeve. Oh, that's a nice little touch. These are plastic, but they have a little brass insert inside them, so when you do the screw up, it doesn't squash the plastic. So it should come out of its case. The thing I can see is the plug is attached to the case, but then the whole guts of it slides out. And I can see there's a, a ribbon connector down in here. Let's see if I can get that ribbon connector to pop out. There we go. I wonder if I'll ever be able to get that back in again. So the case doesn't really have much inside it. Um, all it looks like it is is a little board in the back and there's two little stainless like circle things in the bottom, little holes. And then this has these two pins on the back so when you slide it in it sort of locks into place and aligns. This whole thing seems like very nicely made, which you'd expect from something that's like sort of meant for work. It's um... The brand is like Yakazi or Yakazi or something, and they still make timing equipment for like sporting events and stuff. But, and as far as I can tell, they might still make police stuff, but they definitely don't make this style anymore. Obviously, they use radars now. So looking at these two things, this looks like it would like pop like a slide across or something. Oh, actually, no, there's a tab here that sits down inside. So maybe it's not how that works, but yeah. And you can see this one here, like you can see what I mean, like that's a slot, and then this button looks like the whole thing would slide across that way, but it doesn't seem like it wants to. I don't know. The other thing is, what else have I got? There's four buttons here, and they've got some, this one just says, oh, I'm guessing it says HM, I'm guessing hours and minutes, and then this one's got Katakana on it. Uh, I can't read what that one says. Um, I'll have to translate that later and see what it says. This is probably stuff about the roll of paper, which I'm guessing goes in here. It says push, but it doesn't move. I got this roll of paper, which is from a ATA, like a card machine. I'm just hoping it's the right size. Pure luck, but it actually looks like the width might be correct. Actually, where's the little front? Does it fit through the little slot here? Wow, this might actually be the correct with roll of paper for this. That's pretty awesome if I can just buy regular like FPOS machine paper. I guess it makes sense that they design it to work with a standard size paper. But then again, this machine was probably around before FPOS or at least before it started being, getting used a lot. I'm just gonna chuck the little ink thing back in it and put the cover back on the front because I don't want that to get damaged in any way. 
If I can get this thing to actually print, that's going to be awesome. The biggest challenge is going to be working out how the wiring on it goes. Yeah, so as I was saying before the SD card was full, this, yeah, I can see underneath, that's obviously like the roll of paper obviously goes in there, but this little door, there's a switch here as well. Oh, that was the camera, there's a switch. We'll find out what that does later. How does this open is the question. Oh, there's like more rollers and stuff under here. This paper is not going to be... I was hoping the paper would just sort of go around the roll and straight and yet out the front, but it looks like there's more to it than that, so... Might have to figure out how the paper actually goes in it. But first, this says push. This is a button. I feel like this should just open. Yeah, okay, like it's lifted now, but it's definitely stuck on something. It doesn't want to actually go. And there's this other square on the side here, but that doesn't seem to be a button or anything. Can't see anything in through here. Oh, can't see anything in through there. How? How does the paper go in? Man, if I'm struggling this much with getting the paper in it, I don't think I have much chance of getting the wiring to work. Oh, yes! It goes up instead of flipping back. Oh yeah, so I sort of had to squeeze the side here. Cool. There's the little knobby thing the paper goes on. Does it fit in the paper? Oh, I reckon... Oh no. No. Nah, this roll of paper is too fat to fit in there. Nah, lame. I'll have to order a special roll or something. What if I can cut this roll down? I think chances of cutting a roll of paper thinner are probably zero, but we'll try later. But for now, keep looking at this. So we can put that aside. Looking inside it, it's not clear how the paper runs. It must go forwards and then down, oh far out, forwards, down, uh, over that, and then over that, and then up underneath. I don't know. Main thing I want to see at the moment is how the power in it is run. It's got a lot more contacts than I was expecting. I was expecting this to have like a obvious power input and then a, like a positive, negative, maybe a constant, a signal for lights maybe, and then one or two wires for the speed signal. But it's got 10 different connect, 10 pins on the back, which is more complicated than I was expecting. And then more screws. There's some globes here. Take the globes out. Put those aside. So my ultimate goal here is to pull it apart and find some kind of component that I can trace back to a pin on the back that will give me a clue as to what is positive and what is negative. But, yeah. I don't know what holds this front plastic case on. It looks like that has to come off to be able to get this whole back cover off. I also want to know what to go with these steel covers is. Like, that definitely moves, like it's loose. It should, it looks like it should slide this way, but it doesn't want to. Why are they here? How do they work? This one seems like it's also hot. Oh, is there a, please don't be a screw under the sticker. No, I can't feel a screw under there. I decided I'm just going to undo these. Looking at this one, it's um, it's got a bit of a curve to it, and I reckon if I line that up with this, uh, I thought the curve might have lined up with this dent, but it kind of doesn't. I wonder if it's supposed to be bent or if it's been bent when they were smacking the thing to destroy it. Why? So what's underneath this one? Oh, it's got a um. Okay, so that looks like a little potentiometer, possibly to calibrate. Calibrate it? Because I guess they have to like check the calibration and recalibrate it and stuff. I'm guessing this one has the same same sort of thing underneath it. No, this one's kind of... I, I don't reckon this is meant to be bent. I reckon this is supposed to be flat. Might bend it back before we put it on. Now that that's out of the way, does this come off? No, it's the same. Hang on. I just found two screws, these two here that hold this big metal plate to the circuit board, I undid them 
and the board sort of comes off separately to the front. This big plastic bit is definitely under that, so that has to come off first. And yeah, I took these two off and this half moves, but this the half is still attached. The only things I can see is there's two screws down inside here. They're not very easy to get to, so I'm, I don't think this is the right order to take it apart in. Because normally stuff like this, like it's sort of made to be serviced, so they make things obvious to come apart, or at least like make it so they do come apart easily, but we'll get those out. Now actually I can see another one of those little gold screws down into there, like going that way, so I definitely can't get to that one. How does this plas black plastic piece has to come off for this to come off because it's underneath it here. I really don't want to break this. I have, a f I have a feeling that I have to remove the printer first and I can see there's a screw here that's already missing. I'll take this one out. Oh no, this screw is like super rounded. Come on. Oh yes. It looks like this is actually held in with just these two... Whoa, okay, that screw's gone forever. This looks like it might just lift out now. Oh, are you kidding me? The ribbon cable's completely broken. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. I definitely didn't break that. That was definitely already broken. Well, I've never made a ribbon cable before, but I guess I'm going to be working out how to make a replacement ribbon cable, so that'll be interesting. Stay tuned if you want to see how to make a ribbon cable when I work that out. That's lame that that's broken, but this still doesn't come off either. This isn't going well. So looking at the little printer, I'll put it aside, but I'll have a close look at it. I should be able to just solder wires from these joints and then solder them to the ends where this landed and it should be right. What is a bit disappointing is this is made in China on it. I thought this would be all Japanese made, but it's not. But it's also stamped as Epson, like the brand that makes like office printers and stuff. So it's kind of cool that it's like a standard like it's made by a normal company, Epsom. But yeah, it's a bit disappointing that the um, thing's torn. I can actually see the way this works, it's pretty interesting. Oh, I, well get into, I was going to say, I'll get into it later, but I'll get into it now. On zoom. So, as you can see, there's this angled, like, groove here. And then on the back, this is just a normal brushed motor. Then on the back here, this is an encoder, so this reads the position of this motor and effectively turns it into a servo. So the little brain inside the control box knows what's going on. And if I turn this, I don't know if I'm going to be able to turn it. No, I can't really spin it. This, you can see there's a little pin there. And that little pin will, will, when this turns, the little pin will slide in the groove. And that's how it's moving the print head backwards and forwards to print across the receipt. So once this is wired up, it should be pretty cool to actually get it to try and move when it's flipped over like this. We'll see what happens. At this point, I'm pretty much just pulling screws out in the hope that it gets me somewhere. And that did exactly what I expected it to, which was remove this little roller, which doesn't really help. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, so the little roller actually held this down. Now this comes off. Cool. <clears throat> so there is a fair bit of brain inside this. That's a pretty big microprocessor, which I guess is expected, but I was sort of hoping there wouldn't be anything that complicated because it's going to be harder for me to work out the wiring. But let's have, let's get, yeah. I'll have to look at this, work out what's going on. Oh, that little button was like hidden underneath something to press. So what I'm up to now is the hard part effectively, working out which of these pins is power, because there's a good chance I could fry something if I put power to the wrong place. So I've got my multimeter set to continuity, so it just beeps when I put the pins together. The most basic one I can test first is these three sockets here, which are from the light bulbs. So I'll just put a contact on that and then go through these pins. There's nothing there. I'll try this top side. There we go, so straight up. This pin here is connected straight to a light bulb, so that is gonna be power in, or at least like an accessory power in to know that the thing's on. We'll check any other ones. Ah, oh, so there's two there. So there's three pins that light up with the bulbs. So there's a good chance that 
those three pins are either going to be a straight ground or a straight power and not a signal because if they're a signal they wouldn't be wired to the back of the light bulb that lights the screen up they'd just be constant so we'll go around keep working from there what i do need to do is i'll get a piece of paper okay so what i've just done is gotten the board out of the back of the case that has the plug on it so now i can test the actual pins and then start writing down what each pin does there's two what look like capacitors yeah i think they're capacitors on the back of the board unfortunately there's no positive or negative on them because if they had a positive or negative marking you can bet that they're like input filtering a capacitor is like a it's kind of like a big water tank if you imagined like a big water tank full of water and you turn the tap on the water comes out smoothly and even if you were just like chucking buckets of small water into the top of it you would still get a smooth flow out the bottom that's what these do they take the power in and sort of hold it and then let it out slowly and they filter the input like current and so if they had a positive and negative on them we could make a pretty good guess as to which one of these is positive and negative because we can just follow it back but what we can do at least is um follow these back okay so oh there we go so this leg here is attached to this track and you just see the track and follow it and the fact that it goes to a screw says that it's probably going to be in the ground or negative so these could also be signal filtering but signal filtering capacitors are normally these tiny little ones so these big ones are probably power so i'll trace out the multimeter in a second i'm going to start writing down where everything connects and hopefully we can build up an idea of where to connect wires to so what i've done here is i've drawn these two corners on the paper to represent the rounded corners on here so I know which way up it goes and then I've drawn there's actually two rows of six pins one two three four five six there's not tens there's even more than I thought and then each of the boxes here I can just draw in what I think it is so I'm just going to start measuring with the multimeter and then writing in what I reckon they might be so we know that our capacitor here is ground which is this screw which is also this so I'll put it on here and I'll go through and test each of these pins. Hopefully one of them beeps. Nothing beeps, so that's a good start. This is on, isn't it? Yep. Cool, that doesn't help. Oh yeah, if I just looked at this, I wouldn't be able to see that it goes to nowhere. There's no other track coming off it. So there is also the other side of this capacitor here, which bridges across to this joint. It goes around to that pin. So third from the bottom should be this capacitor other side of this capacitor yep uh, so if that's the if that's the grounded side I reckon that's probably the positive side I'm gonna take a guess put the third one from the end here as a plus so this isn't gonna be like the final this isn't gonna be the final pin out I'll do it all and as I go I'll be cut drawing it out and changing it and pretty much just work through and as you figure out what each one is you'll be able to sort of use the one you already know to check back to other ones it's a pretty slow process but I might stop the camera for a bit work my way through and then I'll get, come back to you in a minute see how far I've gotten so this is where I'm at currently what I discovered was this is this ribbon cable that comes so all that's on here is the input the ribbon cable comes into the thing if I zoom in here you can see that the top row is actually joined together so that one that one and that one are both the same thing and there's four separate ones so that's what i've drawn here my two rows of five pins the top ones are joined together and the bottom ones have i read it wrote it as i wrote a and b so 4a 4b and 5a 4b and then what i did was tracked with the multimeter from there to the pin here to work out which ones are actually connected back to the main thing and this is what i came up with so number one pin inside the white plug is connected to those two number one things and then an example this one at the bottom here this pin in the number three row at the bottom is connected to number three and number four a so it's connected to this and it's connected to four a looking closer at this now what i should have noticed is in the first place the top middle row of pins where's my focus the top middle row of pins this these couple here the four middle, aren't actually connected to anything and that was confirmed when I did the measuring. I found that none of these four and that bottom one, they didn't actually match up to any of these. So I can straight away, that makes my job easier because I've ruled out four pins from being anything possible. So I'm going to keep working on it, but I've got 
four less for that one as well. Five less pins to look at now. Now it's looking a lot more like you'd expect. All right, so after looking at my drawing, because one and two are sort of connected to two pins, I'm guessing they're power, so positive or negative, because they're big, so they're probably carrying most of the power. And then these are both connected to one as well, and they were the ones were connected to the globes, so that positive was a guess, but they're both power, so the power is coming between one and two and three. These ones, because they're small wires on their own little individual pins, I'm guessing that they're signal wire, but what I've just discovered is... I don't think I'm going to see it with the camera. I'll try and get the camera in there. Right in the way. Down inside here, if you can see in there, there's that little rectangle block. There's my light. There you go, there's that little rectangle at the bottom and you can see that there's a white stripe on the left hand side of it and there's another smaller one, this is very hard to video, there, they both have white stripes on the left side. They're little capacitors and the white stripe indicates the negative side and when I trace that, if I put the multimeter lead on the white stripe side, it connects back to one of these back connections. So that confirms that one of them is a negative input. Well, not an input. It confirms that one of them is negative. It could be negative signal, but then if it's negative and I can trace that back to one of these one, two or three big pins, then that's a safe bet. I'm willing to say that that's going to be a negative. So I'm going to double trace it out and then we'll put power to it and see what happens. All right, so I've poked around with the capacitors with those two little ones back there, and I've found that the positive side of them was connected to number two, like the second row of solder down, and number the negative side was connected to number three. So I've got my 12 volts here. See, I've put the power to uh, which was it again? I already lost the piece of paper. There it is. Positive to the top one, to the middle one, negative to the bottom. We'll see if the smoke comes out. Here we go. Made a spark. There's no smoke. Okay, well that was like nothing happened. So I don't know if that's it's not bad. It's not good. So on our board here, that's the bottom. So what I'm gonna do actually, let's spin this around, see if that one of those bulbs lights up. So looking at my little diagram, to get number two and three, two is bottom left wire and three uh, I need longer leads on my thing here. I'm hoping now this is flipped around. I might actually be able to see see the light light up or something. Maybe. Now I'm going to get these in here without covering the camera. Because I've got my little piece of paper, I know which two I have to go to inside here as well. So we'll do it this way. So we need positive the number two, which is the bottom left. Okay, well there's no lights lighting up. Hey, there we go. Cool, it's doing something. So I'm touching pin number one. What's pin number two do? Pin number two makes a little spark. So I'll probably stop touching that one. But pin number one lights up the display. So let's put a bit more, something a bit more permanent to that and start pressing buttons and see what happens. So I've been putting this back together, just the bits that didn't need to be pulled apart. And I was thinking about this ribbon cable. Normally when people see stuff like this, like you just go, oh, it's broken, I'll throw it in the bin, I can't get it apart. But this is literally just like, it's just a bunch of wires, and you can see the little pads. You could just solder wires from that to the other end. But what this is, is it's effectively just a, f a flexible circuit board. So it's got a, whatever the plastic base is, and then the little lines are just copper, and there's plastic over them. So I had a bit of an experiment with the end piece here and sanded it, and I'm actually hopefully for the car to go past. I'm actually able to expose the copper by sanding it off. So I'm going to sand this one as well. I'm just going to see if I can actually just solder the ends of it straight back together and then put it back in. So hopefully you can see that there. That's the sanded end of it. You can see I've got a few millimeters of exposed copper on the ends. So I'll sand the other one and hopefully they just solder straight back together. So I'm just going to see if solder is actually going to stick to this. Like this isn't uh, maybe this is how you're supposed to fix these. I don't really know, but I'm just making this up as I go along. Like the whole thing, in case you haven't noticed, I'm making it up as I go along, as far as like working out pins and stuff, but it is all like techniques that are working. So I don't know how much you can see because of where the camera is, but I should be able to stick solder to the ends, 
that I where I've exposed the copper. Oh yeah. That works. So I'm hoping to be able to just solder this one straight to the other one. But even if that doesn't work, I'm still going to be able to... I could like solder them close enough and then use little bits of wire to jump it. Yeah, so that's stuck. I'll do the other side. So just to show you how I'm doing this. I've got the ruler sitting here to hold this flat and this piece of metal sitting on it to hold it down. It's making this a lot easier to work on rather than it sliding around all over the place. Alright, so what I'm hoping... whoops. Not to do that. I'm hoping I can just sort of put this next to it, heat the solder joint and it'll stick. I don't know if that's what's actually going to happen, but... This looks like it. It looks professional. That's what's important. Hey, there you go. That bit's now joined. You've got to be careful not to heat it too much. Like, if you can't get one, go on to the next one and come back to it, or you're just going to probably start melting the plastic. So at this point, I'm just sort of adding random items to it that are heavy to hold it all in place. That is definitely... A successful technique. I don't know how strong it's going to be. I'm definitely going to... I'll put a piece of like electrical tape or something over it to sort of hold it. But if I'm careful putting it back in, I should be right with it. And there we go. There's the finished joints. So I'll just be... I'll just check use the multimeter to double check that... Um, so there's the finished part. They're all joined. I'll just use the multimeter to double check that bit's not shorted out. The rest of them definitely don't look shorted out. But... Yeah, that's a successful repair. I don't have to run any new wires. I'm going to put some tape over it just to sort of help strengthen it, but we'll continue on with putting the rest of it back together now. I think this part's ready to go back in now. To be honest, I forget whether I have to put the top plastic cover on or this on first, but um, I'm just going to put a strip of tape over it. Slightly to help reinforce it, but also partially so, like, if it touches something, like if it touches the metal case, it's not, um... It's not going to conduct. It's not going to be super neat, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tape over it from each side, so the tape is like touching sticky side to sticky side. It's not going to look very nice, but it does mean that like it shouldn't like peel off over time if the adhesive goes bad, because tape stuck to tape sort of never really falls apart. There, you go. cut the bulk of the tape away just to neaten it up. Now, this threads through here very carefully. Cool. So I'll put the one screw that it came with back in it, and hopefully the ticket printer thing is going to work now. It's going to be pretty cool if it does. I also have no idea what I did with all the screws. Oh, does this tape from the ticket printer go under or over this? Oh, please don't tell me. There's like a little gap here. I hope it doesn't go through that gap. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, man. It goes through like a tiny little slot. Okay, I'm actually going to take that off again. And then try and put it on a different way. I'm pretty sure if I have to stuff around with this this much, there's a good chance that I'm not going to be able to get, that it's going to crack one of those solder joints. How did I get this out of here? I remember it was hard to get out. I don't remember how it came out. Actually, I didn't have bulbs in it for a start. Okay, so I got the plastic cover back on. Pretty sure there's nothing else has to go underneath it. Like, I've got a little box of bits. And I'm pretty sure they're all outside bits, but we'll find out. Now, it is not immediately obvious where this ribbon cable is supposed to run. It's really not obvious where this ribbon cable is supposed to run. It's like, how do I get it down to where this little plug is? Okay. I got it, I think. This seems unnecessarily complicated, but... It goes down and through here, and there's like a little slot that it has to go through. And then it... I'm pretty tempted... If these solder joints break getting this through here, 
then I think I'm gonna when I take it apart the next time I might actually cut a bit of this plastic out so I can put it back in without having to bend the ribbon cable so much no you can't be serious there's no way this is gonna go in here Alright, that's how it sits. If those joints are in place, I'll be happy. Alright, it's plugged in. Oh, oh, that's good. It only landed here. Alright, got to put the rest of the plastic covers and these little covers back on. You don't need to watch me do that. Okay, so this is back together now. I'm going to put power to it again and see if my repair on the printer has done anything. I also might not know if it's done anything because I don't actually know how it works. So maybe the printer will just do nothing, but... We'll put power to it, see what happens. There we go. So as far as I know, these buttons on here, that says set hour minute. So I'm pretty sure this is the year. Because this is like, I guess it puts this on the speeding ticket. So we'll set the year. I don't know what this is. 306. Oh, maybe this is the month. 10... 12. Yeah, this is the month. I don't know what the date today is. It's the 10th or the 13th. And this is the time. So it's 2.405. Let's pretend. Okay, set. And then... This is... Oh! Hey, the printer makes sound! Hey, that's cool. That means at least some of those joints work. So this sets at 2 kilometers an hour. And if this would read when you're driving, I've got to work out which wire it is, but that'll be another time. I don't even know if we'll be able to do that, but we'll find anyway. And, um, this, I should print that, and then it should print a ticket out with that speed on it. I'm going to press print and see if it does anything. Ready? Ah, oh, that's anticlimactic. Print. Print. That's annoying. Thought it would do something. There is a, um... There is a switch on the bottom of this. I don't want this little board here to touch. There's a blue switch on the bottom here. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to click it and then see what happens. Now does it print? No. That just sets through time. Sets, sets date. Oh, that definitely says... That says print, that top word. Bottom word, I cannot read. To Google Translate. Oh, actually, my phone's about to die. Maybe we won't get any Google Translate. If you don't have the Google Translate app, get it. You literally just like take a picture of it and then put it in the phone. There's a thing where it's meant to be able to take the picture like live, like of it, and it'll just translate it, but it doesn't work that well because the camera app within it sucks. So you're better off taking the picture, going to import, and then just putting the picture straight in. We'll see if you can work out what it says. So I know the top bit says printer, which I can read, or print, and the bottom bit. Paper feed. That makes sense. Print paper feed. Oh, let's put some paper in it and see what happens. So this paper I've got's too wide. I'm just going to try and cut a strip down thinner and see if I can feed it through. Here's a randomly guessed size piece of paper. I assume, looking at the, <clears throat> looking at the bottom of it, the paper, can you see that bit in the camera? Yeah, the paper comes out of the reel I reckon it goes down here, over that roller, mm, under or over that roller, and mm, where's the wheel? That's turning, so I reckon it goes, I'm going to feed it through this way instead. I reckon it goes down there, come on, go in the slot, down there, around there, and then up under here. Come on, pull the paper through. You know you want to. There we go. Aha! The paper's coming out. I was expecting this to just be like, shoot, and shoot it out, but it's pretty slow. Also, my randomly guessed width piece of paper probably isn't helping, but... This paper going through now. Can I pull it back? Uh, yes, I can. Let's pull it back and then put the um the ink thing in there. Wherever the ink thing's gone.
Now we press print. Print! Oh. Hmm. I wonder how you tell if it's actually trying to print. Like, I wonder if it's a bad one of those joints that I did, or if it's just not printing because it's, like, missing some button or something that I have to press. Like, some of those sort of solder joints definitely work, at least, because it feeds the paper through. Try to think if I noticed any little sensor or something to say that the lid's not on or that the paper's not in there or something, but... Alright, I'm gonna pull that thing apart and have a look at the solder joints and see if they all look okay still. Alright, I'm holding this hand very still. Yeah, if we remember this, we decided that there were two pins that had power to them and I only had one and now I'm holding the alligator clip so it's touching two and this red light's just come on and it didn't do anything. Oh, are you serious? That's it! <laughs> oh, it's not printing anything, but it's it's trying. Is it going to stop? Oh, yeah. You probably can't see that on the camera. There is the faintest, crappiest bit of text on this paper. This ink ribbon is completely stuffed. That's cool. It works. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. It's on there. You can't see it, but it's on there. Just trust me. I can see it. I don't know how I'm going to get this ink to work. I don't think you can buy cartridges for this anymore. But it's doing something. Alright. Actually, hey, that means my um, solder joints are all good. I can see very faintly on there. Um, I'm going to pop this ink cartridge out and... We'll have a closer look at it, see what we can discover. So, I don't know even why I'm bothering trying to show you this, but oh, it's, it's there, it's there, I can see it. It says the date, 2020, first, 13, whatever I set it to. It works, it's working. My solder joints work, the whole thing went back together properly, the pinouts that I found worked, everything works. So, let's see if I can get this ink ribbon to start actually making some ink. So I don't know if this counts as cheating or not, but when I google the part number you can actually just buy these. It seems like it's Epsom brand, like the printer. It seems like they still go in a bunch of modern printers. So I'm going to order one of those, but I'm also going to plate this one in the meantime. So I'm keen to get this thing to print. I don't want to wait for that other one to turn up. So I pulled this apart anyway. And the way it works is, this is like, just got a little piece of foam on it, so I thought it'd be like a roll of ribbon, and it would feed it across, and then like, spool it in the other side or something. But it's actually just a ribbon loop, and this is a piece of foam, and as it, like, this turns, and it rolls the ribbon around and puts ink on it every time, the piece of foam, like, crumbled into nothingness, but my fingers and that are all glowing black, because it does actually have ink in it. So, I've, like, pulled the ribbon along with my fingers. This should be a section now that has new ribbon exposed so I'll try and get it tensioned again. We'll put it in and see if it'll print something. Alright, I've just fed it through. It's left some black stuff on there so we'll see if the new rotated ink works. <laughs> yes, look at that! <laughs> yes! Perfect. I don't know how long that's going to last because it's not actually pulling the ink through like it's supposed to, but there you go. Look at that. Yes! Let's put the front cover on. Ready? Ready? Oh yeah! Next one. Where's the focus? Cool. Let's set the date and stuff on it see if it actually reads the right... Well, of course it's going to read the right thing, but now I'm just pretty much just playing with it. I think at this point I can probably end the video. This is working. I might change the... Oops, I dropped it. I might change the plug on the back of this, but other than that, I'll put the case back on it and we'll 
start getting it set up and powered in the car. I'm super happy with how this came out. Uh, this is going in my 4th gen Prelude police car, which if you have a look on my channel, there's a heap of videos getting it painted and all the electronics and the siren and the lights and everything, so check that out. Make sure if you liked it, please like the video because it makes like a big difference to other people seeing the video. And yeah, I'll hopefully see everyone on the next video. So, see yous. Thank you.